I would like to, uh, I don't think they were introduced, I don't know if they're going to be introduced later, but uh, uh, we have uh, worked out an arrangement with the Governor's Office of Economic Development to have their new uh, leader for technical innovation and university relations to be housed on campus. That's Karsten Heise. And Edon has a similar position, uh, and he also will have an opportunity to be housed part-time on this campus, and that's Doug Urban here. <laughs> These gentlemen will be housed very near our technology transfer office, which I think will really enhance communications on uh, what's going on at the university in terms of research and development that can be commercialized for the community. But I'm going to talk about the graduates at the University of Nevada, Reno. And what I say today about graduates here also goes for UNLV, it goes for TMCC, WNC, GBC, et cetera. The Nevada system of higher education produces graduates. It is a high goal of state policy that we educate and create more people with degrees, more people with certificates in professional education, so that we can develop the professional workforce necessary to diversify the economy of Nevada. And that's exactly what NCHI does. And uh, uh, our role here is to produce bachelor's and graduate degrees. So we uh, have our, we, we need to continue to attract students and give them a, a remarkable experience so that they truly are valuable in terms of development of human capital, truly valuable to the business community, the nonprofit community, and uh, the, the future of knowledge creation in this country, and especially in Nevada. We have attracted more students here than ever before. We're eight, over 18,000 students here. We have a higher graduation rate than we've ever had before, which means we're moving them through to graduation. Last year, think of the number. Last year, we graduated 3,665 degrees and added that many more degrees to this community, which means these are professionally, highly educated folks that are ready to move into the workforce in one form or another or on to graduate school. And that's a significant number because there are a lot of towns in this state that don't have 3,665 people in them. And we're turning that many people with degrees, graduate degrees, medical degrees, and undergraduate degrees. We also are focusing now on giving a high value education with hands-on learning. Uh, we had the Concrete Canoe Contest uh, national competition here uh, a couple of weeks ago. And these kinds of contests give our students an opportunity to work together in teams, put their knowledge to work to actually create a product that is nationally competitive in terms of design, materials, uh, composition, and things of that nature. And our team won fourth nationally in that contest. They did a good job. Journalism has a very similar and equally uh, successful marketing team that they go out and uh, make national competitions. But we also do a hands-on education by emphasizing internships and uh, study abroad opportunities, uh, undergraduate research in the laboratories and the like, so that our students have opportunities to put their knowledge to work. Uh, we have one of our average students here, Matt Neven, <laughs> not really, he got a 4.0 and, and won the Hertz medal, so he is like our valedictorian. But uh, here's an individual who uh, got a business, a uh, economics and finance degree and was immediately picked up by Whittier Corporation and uh, has gone to work for them. So they, he leaves the campus, goes into the business world here in Reno, and I'm sure he'll be CEO one day of Whittier. That's what we're counting on. And when you are, we're going to see you. <laughs> it's called the give back. <laughs> um, hey, man, I'm going to retire. We also have graduate programs here. We turn out lots of graduate students. They get much more uh, technical education, deep 
deeper education and they go on to the market. And we'll talk about some of our former graduate students here who've turned their work into, into business. But we generated our highest ever uh, competitive grant award amount last year of $81 million. This allows us to hire graduate students, hire technicians, bring them to town, they live here, and we generate research results. One interesting feature, which was which I hear about from business all the time, but it was reinforced to me by a former CEO of DuPont at a meeting I was in in Washington on Monday. He says, you know, uh, you have to make profits quick in industry, so industry is really not set up to do basic research. We rely on universities to do basic research, and then we pass the results of basic research into application through industry. And that's where industry and the university comes together is in translational research, taking basic concepts that we discover at universities and move them into cooperation with industry to convert knowledge into technology, which can be commercialized. So the relationship between universities and business is quite natural, and it's important that we do basic research. You all remember the old uh, Proxmire Golden Fleece Awards? Uh, one of my favorites was uh, he was uh, uh, chastising us in the 70s for running around, paying federal money, running around, chasing butterflies in the Amazon to look at their mating habits. And that was a, I remember hearing this from Walter Cronkite. But you know, that was the beginning of the pheromone work. And the pheromones uh, are fundamental to, uh, to uh, insect control in many, many devices around the country. So that's the kind of basic research that we do here. And graduate students are involved in that, and they get their degrees and go out into the business. We are responsive to industry. And I'm about to close here. We, uh, it's very important for us to listen. And we do listen. Uh, we've created in the last few years here an entrepreneurship minor, a renewable energy minor, a renewable energy graduate certificate. We have created uh, BS and MS degrees in material processing engineering, listening to the mining industry. So we want to listen to you. Uh, I carry around a business card. Anytime you get one of my business cards, and we have some here today, I understand, They're being pointed back out to this desk. And I always uh, ask people to turn it over and paste, place it face down. Not because I'm shy, but it's because there are two numbers on the back of this card, which I told Red last time I was with them. Uh, we have numbers to the Technology Transfer Office that any business can call the university to look for technical expertise to work with with their industry. Secondly, is the Small Business Development Center, we call them the Business Services Group, and some days you might even get Sam to pick up the phone. Uh, because we have lots of business services. The difficulty of this large institution working with businesses coming to town or businesses that are already here is, gee, I don't know if I could park up there. And if I did park up there, I wouldn't know where to start looking for expertise. So these two numbers give you two points of contact that you can find expertise anywhere in the university to, to interact with for your business. So let me close there, and uh, thanks very much for coming to campus. We enjoy having you on campus anytime.